Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. Welcome to Frazetta Friday. <laughs> this was an impromptu um, call for the choice. I I had been talking to Kelsey, Kelsey Shannon, my co-host for the Richard Friend experience. And uh, I was saying that I, I really do like to have like names that kind of rhyme. Unfortunately, there's videos that I'll never do because there's no day of the week that sounds catchy with that technique or title. But for Zeta Friday works. So look, you win some, you lose some. All right, I just, these are all just beautiful scans of Frazetta. Some are details, some are full pieces. Um, there's some sketches, there's some paintings. I tried to pick stuff that wasn't like the, the greatest hits that you would commonly see the most of. If you're a Frazetta fan, most of these, if not all, you've probably seen before. Maybe not. You never know. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get to it. So this is a pen and ink piece from 1974. Led Zeppelin was touring for probably Houses of the Holy at this time. Black Sabbath was entrenched in Never Say Die. I don't know. <laughs> I like the the Wikipedia videos where they just like they just spill out facts that they they got from Wikipedia before they do the video. People love it though. I don't do that. <laughs> uh part of the reason that Frazetta was on my mind is I saw the Frazetta girls announce that there's a new Tashin book that's coming out in January of Frank's work. Uh, why that's exciting is it's 469 pages, first of all, which is the biggest Frazetta book that I've ever seen. Number two, it's Tashin, which means it's expensive. No, um, it's uh, 15 and a half by, I think, 11 and a half. So the dimensions are quite big, and um, they do great books. You know, that's the, that's they're famous for the quality of their books, the quality of their binding, and stuff like that. And it's not cheap. It's $200. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to get a Frazetta book, if you were to have one Frazetta book, that might be it. I don't know. It looked good. It looked damn good. I saw some of the comments section. They echoed my words. Another Frazetta book? Do I need it? No. Am I going to get it? Probably. <laughs> no, I already ordered it. It's coming. <laughs> the thing is thick, man. I'm going to need a bigger desk. Uh, so one thing that I do love about Frank's paintings, besides that they just look awesome, is uh, he really leaves a lot of breathing room in the pieces. This is obviously not one of his more like labor-intensive pieces, but uh, a, a lot of times, I mean, you can really actually like if you if you're uh, knowledgeable of how paint is applied to canvas and how paintings are made and stuff like that, I mean, you can really actually see a lot of his techniques. And it's quite fascinating what he does build up. What he leaves is the underpainting, and um, you know what what he builds up. So there's there's a lot of really fun things to uh, see in his work this is such a beautiful piece there's a lot of like motion to it um you know uh he he really was like judicious with his like detail and stuff like that but everything is so well designed i mean he's always got like um uh really fun sh silhouettes like the weapons are always like they're they're like cool looking but nothing is ever over designed and there's really, that's like a great takeaway for any artist out there that um, is interested in drawing and making stuff up out of their imagination and, and things like that, um, is, you know, a good silhouette, a few nice shapes, a little attention to detail, and a bit of a story. And you, you'll, you'll have a higher likelihood of doing something good. The more you overthink things and put a lot of detail, um, you can you can run into things that look over designed, and then you start to lose the um, the the impact of things. So this is cat girl. This is a crop of cat girl. But there's a couple of interesting things that I noticed looking at this piece. One is, I mean, you can actually see that it is cracking. So the application of oil, because he repainted this a few times, um, it, it didn't set 
and it's starting to crack a little bit. That's not a huge deal. The other thing that I noticed that I've always seen this on the painting and I, I never was 100% sure what it was when I would see it in books is there's like a little bit of this like white kind of stipple thing on the tree, which is maybe wetness, catching light, something like that. But I, I was trying to describe it um, in a, a scrapped version of this video. And what I, I think I realized kind of what the technique that he used was. So it it looks to me like this is like some sort of scumbling effect. And scumbling could be used, you could put a little bit of white paint on a rag, a tissue, not probably not a tissue, but something like that. And you just kind of dab it on. But what I, what I also noticed was Frank definitely went back in with paint and painted some strokes. And there's not a ton, but you can clearly see that these are actually applied strokes. So there's, you know maybe a dozen in here that are very particularly placed generally in, in catching light in an indent of shadow. So when you pull back, you can see these like stronger areas where he clearly hit it with, um, look, it looks to be pure white, which is, um, it may not be, um, the contrast on the piece, um, could, could be making it look read white where it's not. But uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. You can see up here, we actually laid in the white paint, but then there's that, again, that a bit of the scumbling effect. Here it seems more sort of placed in, like he might have done a little bit more of it. But I still I still believe that that probably a majority of it was done with some sort of uh, like application thing. Now, if you're a painter and you have some other theory on this, you can, you can definitely put it in. But this one to me looks like there's more of the hand-drawn stuff in it. This here looks a little more random. But it may not be. Who knows? It's just like, I honestly like the only reason that I I don't really like um, analyze stuff that way. But if I'm doing a video, if I'm trying to explain something to someone else, then I'll try to figure it out for them. But if I'm looking at art, I just look at it. Um, I I, I don't really uh, get too weird. There's some like skulls in here. There's clearly one right here for sure. I I've I've thought that Frank does that in some of his pieces, and I'm I'm nearly sure that he does. There's um, another piece, I don't know if it'll be in here, but I noticed a face in it that I hadn't seen before, and it looked pretty intentional that he put it in. But, you know, humans will try to put faces on things, like the front of a car, your girlfriend's boobs and belly button. No. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> All right, so we've got naked, nearly naked woman being grabbed by, I don't know, the Neanderthals, monkey men, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a fight. You know some someone's going to come and kick their ass, though. There's no way they're going to get away with this. That's the thing, is is you know you know the story in Frank's books is there's always a hero or heroine that comes in and is badass and takes care of business like this. I like she's wearing little shoes. <laughs> Now, I don't really know the story on this piece in terms of what's going on here. Um, oh, those are aliens. Okay. I always thought, I, I, again, that's what I'm, this actually kind of proves my point of what I said before. Is I, I always thought that like this guy's head had gotten cut off and she had set it there, but I don't think that's the story on this one. This is clearly like someone that's headless. These are maybe like she sacrificed him to them. I don't even know. 1975, Led Zeppelin was preparing to record Presence. Black Sabbath was breaking up. Richie Blackmore had left Deep Purple and had formed Rainbow with Ronnie James Dio. I don't know. Like, that all could be right, actually. I don't know. Something like that. And Frank was somewhere doing awesome art. To the pleasure of fantasy fans and stoners everywhere and peep van aficionados <laughs> people that needed art for the side of their van all right so we've got a naked girl talking to like a little man there's actually i don't know if i have it um in this batch of pages but i had another sheet of um five other versions of this they were all really really nice this is great it's really, really good. Really great shapes on the girl. He really um, uh, is like a like cartoony quality to him, but they're they're um, they're so good looking. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. 
this piece is always interesting to me and i don't know i would be really curious to see what this looks like in person this always i always feel like i've i've not seen like the best reproduction of this piece and that it, that if that like it, it like it always looks like it was scanned off like a magazine or something like that and it may not be it might might actually be how the painting looks in person but it always feels a little like um like pixely so i don't know now there, there's a possibility i don't know if this was ever in the Frazetta Museum, this this could be a piece that Frank let go. He didn't sell many of his nice paintings when he was alive. He did sell a couple though, and he did sell other stuff. But generally speaking, the paintings um, it seemed that he hung on to them. But yeah, I've, I've never really seen. I don't think a great scan of this piece it feels that way. This is the bottom of. Um, uh, oh shoot! I'm spacing on the um, name of this one. Why is that? it's like throwing me off? Because I'm used to seeing the full piece. This is what is this? Egyptian Queen, All right? Um, yeah, I was like, I'm I'm not used to starting at the bottom. <laughs> There's the cat. Oh man, it's nice. I love the um the painting on the wood here. I think that's such a nice touch because, um. Although now we have more information on the Egyptians and like how colorful their world was, you know, back in the day, I mean, you really didn't have a lot of um, concrete evidence of what the stuff looked like maybe in its prime. But, but I like that Frank actually created wood and like it looks like they use paints on it. I think that that's really a beautiful, thoughtful touch sword coming out of the darkness is pretty crazy i'm like I, I i have a bunch of details they're not going to go in order um but this is really cool you can really see uh the underpainting here which is wild i kind of knew when i was grabbing a lot of these these details that it was gonna it was gonna come up out of order and it was gonna be a little funky not seeing the full paintings with them but at the same time this is just a grab bag video, so you know you can obviously cross reference with um, your other thing. But look, you're getting these insane details of this stuff, so you know, deal with it. You think do you think one of your other YouTube channels is gonna have a Frazetta Friday today? Highly unlikely. All right, there she is. Beautiful piece iconic when frank painted this he probably knew he was doing something important something that would go down as one of his great pieces and look you know i i i don't know if i said this in a recent video or if i was gonna say it in one of my patreon videos but but um oh but it kind of tied in with the stephen platt video i don't know if i ever said it though but um you know one one key to having like a legacy as an artist is you have to have iconic pieces you you need to have a body of work where people will go like i like and, and every artist can kind of think that they have this and go well like people really like that one spider-man cover that i did or whatever but i mean you need you need blockbuster pieces that that blow people's minds and the more of those that you can stack in your career there's there's a tipping point where really you do reach a legendary status because of it um and having like a great body of work with like not a lot of those pieces you'll never get to the heights of the most iconic artists and you'd be surprised if you really analyze those we'll call them legendary artists how many iconic pieces that they have it's not as many as you would think frazetta does have a lot though but you know, it's like a, uh, it's like a, there's a Tony Robbins saying about, um, I don't follow Tony anymore, but a friend of mine used to work for him when we were young, uh, like, like, uh, to be like considered like a great baseball player, which actually ties with Frazetta nicely. Um, uh, you, you, you don't need to succeed all the time to really be considered one of the greats of the game. In fact, you, you, you fail like what, 70% of the time, like 300 batting average. That's like pretty insane. You get, you get. 350 batting average or somewhere up in there you're going to be legendary that's that's a lot of times going up to bat and not doing great things so as an artist you can kind of think of that think of it that way too so this is a prelim for death dealer three i think i don't remember which one this one is pretty cool i remember when frank was selling these pieces 
Frank and Ellie were they were going up on Heritage maybe like 20 years ago, something like that, and uh, they were they were expensive, not not as expensive as they would be now, but they were out of my price range. But I would have bought a few if I could have afforded them. But they weren't they weren't crazy expensive to be clear. Um, I want to say that they were going from maybe three to seven thousand, seven thousand. That's that's a lot, but you know, I thought this was really cool. I I'd never seen this one. This is a great piece. But I can't help you create those great pieces. <laughs> You're going to have to dig deep for that. It's competitive out there. We all know. But you have to, like, you know, the thing is, is, like, saying that, Frank was incredibly competitive. I'm incredibly competitive. I'm not, like, nasty about it, but I compete with myself mainly, to be honest. Like, I have very high standards of what I think is good. But um, beyond that, you know, I mean, as a kid, definitely competition was what, would inspire me to draw more than anything it was like um you know you'd you'd catch wind that some other kid had drawn something and if you if i saw it and it was good then i would be determined to do something at least as good as it if not better but i would never like it wasn't i to be clear i wouldn't show it to the other kid or like try to one-up them but just in my own mind i wanted to make sure that i could get to a level like that so it's just something that's in you, though, you know. You're never satisfied. Never. <laughs> I've seen... Th this isn't the greatest scan of this piece, unfortunately. Um, I have another one, but I don't think it's in this folder. Shoot. So, where you can see the washiness of the inks a little bit more. It's a little, these are a little, um, like, kind of... They're, they've been... Um, they look like they might have been, oops, sorry, they might have been turned grayscale. He really does do, like, great women's bodies. I mean, they're all different shapes and sizes, but um, he really gets some good, good, fun forms. Like, lots of curves. Same with his males, though. There's uh, one of the Lord of the Rings pieces we're going to look at. Man, the men, the, the men have the chunkiest thighs, the um, orcs, or whatever they are. Um, uh, so good, so cool. This is great too. We were talking about elbows, Kelsey and I the other day. <clears throat> you can really see the bone with the muscles going over it, and Frank is so good at this stuff too. Wham! <clears throat> I really like this. I thought this was a nice, just like, I hate to call it a doodle, but you know, for Frank kind of is a doodle, but man, it's really good. He did a um, series of movie posters, <clears throat> kind of in like the style of the day, which was like that sort of Jack Davis sort of vibe. Frank could do it really, really good, man. He could do caricatures great. These, I, th I think these are watercolor, but man, they're just beautifully painted. The, the fact that he could switch gears and go into stuff like this is incredible. And he did quite a few of these, you know, and they're really, really good. Like, really good. It's the top of this piece, the detail. It's got some Bob Ross action crackalack in here. <laughs> Uh, this edge right here, I never realized how straight this was. Man, that's crazy. Let me see. Yeah, it's funny. Like, you see it close up and you go, boy, man, he just literally took the palette knife and just went, whoop, whoop, whoop. And it looks really cool. A little blending. Oh, it's so nice. really really incredible what paint does on canvas it it's just mind-blowing how beautiful it can look and how simple some of like how simple some of it is it's not simple to you and i but for someone like frank man it's like he's just like puts the silhouette a little bit of smoky stuff and it's like got like magic happening and it's just so wild 
credit to the human eye for for taking in that way uh was this the same i think we saw a, another scan of this i can't remember if it was this exact version <clears throat> you'll be able and the, when watching the video you'll you'll recognize it easier than i can when i'm doing the video i can't soak in all the the information so I'm busy narrating too this is great almost has like a little bit of like a phil hale like flesh tone like some of the creepy colors that phil uses for the skin frank said at this time when he was working on this he's he was actually intentionally trying to switch his color palette up a little bit and uh it's a shame that he started getting ill and wasn't able to really follow through with this because i mean boy we could have easily had another 20 years of great Frazetta work if he wouldn't have got sick because the thing is is it wasn't just the strokes but he was sick for a long time with a thyroid disease that was undiagnosed and he was really really ill and not doing well and he just kind of pushed through it as best as he could but you know you can't have something like that going on and have it not affect your work so i mean this is fantastic though man it's good the ferocity on this guy's face is great I thought i'd mix it up with a little something like this too pretty i don't know how long something like this would take frank to draw but it sure is dandy <laughs> oh here we go get him jaguar god stab that Suck her in the neck. Dang, get him in the stomach. <laughs> yeah, this is some crazy colors he's using. That's wild. Look, she's tripping. She's like, damn, dude. I knew Jaguar God was a badass, but this bad. Oh, and again, simple design on the belt. No, not a bunch of shit all over here. Not stuff floating off. It's just got a couple of studs. That's all. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. We kind of saw the bottom of this piece in the other one because I had talked about the sword, so move along. But beautiful um, a detail of it. Credit to the Frazetta Girls. I'll have a link to their um, Instagram, and uh, you can order that book, actually. There's a link in their um, link tree for uh, it if you want to pick up the Tashin book. And uh, I'm also... the I'll pin a comment... I've, we did, Kelsey, Shannon, and I have done two extended hangs with Sarah Frazetta, and, and they're really, really good. I mean, if you're a Frazetta fan and you've not watched those, do yourself a favor. I'd watch the most recent one first. I'll put that one first and then the first one that we did. They're both incredible, but, you know, having the opportunity to be able to talk to her and really get insight into Frank, even though she was young when he was alive and healthy, um, you know, she knows a lot and we got we got a really really incredible look at the new museum that they'd opened down in miami um or boca raton i think it was but check it out because it's really really good and as, as far as i know we've we have a date forever and that date is that for frank's birthday she she's a guest she's welcome anytime on my channel i'd have her any anytime but um so yeah, February 9th, we'll um, have her back for Frank's birthday, <clears throat> I hope. And that would be incredible, because that would be the third time that we've had her on. And um, she's awesome. And, and, and she, we have a lot of fun. So, ah, oh, this is so cool. Really interesting colors on this. Man, this is really, really wild. It's great looking. God, man. I love this piece. I actually, I think a friend of mine may own this. I could be wrong on that, though. But I, uh, either way, oh, man, she's so pretty. And it, the techniques on this, it's almost like a Ralph Bak Bakshi, Baski, Baski. I don't know how to say his last name. Looks like it could be right out of, like, a cartoon or something. It's just the best cartoon ever, though. Man, that is so cool. Oh, this piece is awesome. Dude, this guy just looks like trouble. Oh, my God. Can you imagine having this dude hunt you down with an axe? Wanting to do bad things? It's, it's, she's going to have to step up and hopefully this dude doesn't spot her. But if he does spot her, I think she's got a fighting chance. Leaving the horses scared. He doesn't want to deal with this dude. And here's the question. Is the horse his horse or hers? Probably his. 
That'd be too obvious. I don't know. It's interesting she's wearing her, like, fancy earrings. Man, she's in big trouble. Big chunky legs. Man, it's a great piece. And this dude, he's psycho. I love this. This like tree is like, this is a painting right here. You could just like this. This right here, is beautiful just on its own. <clears throat> and then there's just magic everywhere. God, that is great. Good, good stuff. All right, and boots. This is Battlestar Galactica. Bazlactica. <laughs> Again, firm asses on the men and women. Frank did not disappoint. If you're an ass man, you got it coming and going with Frazetta. Naked Neanderthal dudes. It's interesting that Frank didn't draw their uh, genitals, we'll call it, for uh, the PC crowd. Um, but, uh, yeah, knowing Frank, I'm surprised they're not just hanging out and swinging. <laughs> this must have been for a publication, uh, like right out of the gate. That's the only thing I can think of. Obviously, this is Mace Knight. Um, and uh, this isn't probably his most famous Mace Knight piece, but he did another one. Um, uh, is, I can't remember if it's... Is it Neanderthal or Brand Macmore or whatever it's called? I think it's the Neanderthal piece. Is is the, the I think it's the first one he did on Mace Knight. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is like a hardboard... And he just painted on it, so the some of the color I can't really see it on the guys. I guess there's a little bit, but I, I painted on the board, so it actually creates a value in the piece. You know, where he doesn't paint on it, it like adds some nice texture. Most people know the story is he had a painting due and didn't have um, any canvas, so they had uh, some construction going on at the house, and they had that lying around, and so he used a piece of that. So, happy accident, and uh, worked out well. We saw this little guy before. Again, I shot a 30-minute version of this video that I didn't upload, because I'm a perfectionist. This, is <laughs> this video is my idea of perfection. The first one didn't make the cut. I got fired up, started to fight myself. No. <laughs> I noticed this in the other video, and I, I don't think... I, man, there's a part of me that's not sure. This looks like a pregnant woman's belly right here. Now, I'm not saying that it is, but I when I when I had zoomed in and I was looking at everything that was going on here, this does look like the profile of a woman who's pregnant. Now, it's probably not, but I did think that was interesting. And based on what's going on here, someone might walk away with child. I'm just saying, it's, it's possible. There we go. Oh, wow, I didn't notice that. He went in and darkened some areas in at some point. That's interesting. You don't really notice it when you see the full piece, but yeah, I'm surprised he didn't blend those in more. That's interesting. Like, these these wouldn't be as noticeable. That's really weird. I wonder, you know what? Honestly, I mean, hmm. That's really interesting. That does not look like Frank's work. I don't know. I'm skeptical on that. I wonder if someone had to touch it up, like the paint had chipped. I mean, I, Frank was notorious for going back in and tinkering with paintings, but that just does not look... I'll have to... I'll try to check out, like, the um, other scans that I have of it and see if that is actually on them, because that's really interesting. I've never noticed this spot before, but I've never seen a piece this detailed before. I mean, very well could be Frank. I'm not, I'm not trying to create some sort of conspiracy theory on it. I'm just like... Those are clunky applications of paint. Um, it's really weird. I've never noticed that before. And I'm like curious if we could get another scan of it. <clears throat> Frank leaping around in his violet bikini. <laughs> There's a great, like it's in the bonus features of um, 
painting with fire but they there's a couple of commentaries you can listen to and one is the director and producer of the movie and there's a shot of Frank in the movie. It's a black and white photo of himself. <clears throat> he's he's got white like a white speedo on, like white kind of maybe like swim trunk looking things on it, and um, it's it's him like I can't remember like he's in kind of like a karate pose or like something kind of like this. Like he's gonna beat something up. But apparently Frank was actually nude in the real photo, and he actually went and painted over it. I don't know if he did it for the movie or whatever, but he painted like a bikini on himself so that he wouldn't be naked in it. But it's kind of funny that he would. <laughs> <laughs> get nude and and uh occasionally reference himself that's what Frazetta would that's the lengths that he would go to give you great art us oh, so cool all right and the top of this <laughs> Frank was something else man I'll tell you what Oh, this is the bottom of this piece. Let's see. It's set this. It's a similar color to what he had up. Uh, I mean, this is similar too. Yeah, maybe at the end he just put that in. Cause these these are like the top coats of this. Like you can see it here, and you can see that it's almost the same exact color like in here. So he might have just thought that it needed it. There's, there's still even a little bit on her. And he just darkened those areas in and didn't get fussy with it. There we go. Man, it's so nice. It's funny because the way it was cropped before, it literally like like you don't. It almost looked like it was coming out from um, behind like a wall. And I was like, is he like I? I was almost thinking maybe he was further over to the right, and there was another sword coming into the scene, which would have been interesting too. <clears throat> you know, with with stuff like this, I don't know what made me think of it. Like this time right here, mass is beautiful right here. God, the control of light and value there is fucking great. Um, I love cover art, and obviously I'm a gigantic Frazetta fan. But there is a small part of me that just it, like I had this flash of a thought, which is, it, it is a shame sometimes that there weren't sequences of these pieces meaning that like he kind of did it with death dealer and I, I think it was somewhat successful but um and i guess the conan's guy had it too but it would have been interesting to see a few pieces like few painted pieces with her in different settings you know different different realm like different areas of her realm or something that she lived in it's like i would love to have more story and it's one piece is great but it would be it would have been fun to see more of what she was about where is like if you're a comic book fan um you can sometimes get that in the sequential work i would say i mean i'm i like cover art for comics but i definitely prefer the interiors and if if i had a choice if it was a favorite artist and and they were going to do covers or interiors i would way rather see most people do interiors than covers covers get boring like even if i like an artist i it, it, there's just a point where it's like you know in particular like there's a an artist that i like that that really only does commissions and it's it's like that where it's like uh, one piece of this character, one piece of that character, and there's no, there's, n there's nothing to ground it all. They're just nice pieces, but um, I like story, like you got to have story if you're gonna do that, and that's that's where Frazetta is different, because Frank's individual pieces have story, where you like you dream, you know, dream up a whole book around just this one moment. Man, this is great. So. Frank Frank did it right. Like if you're gonna do individual pieces, you really really have to make them uh, have some kind of significance. There's got to be something to it that engages the viewer beyond just that you drew something. You know. Okay, that's it. All right. I hope that that was fun to listen to. You got to hear me ramble, bunch of nonsense. And uh, the good news is you got to see Frazetta. You can always mute me and put on that. Um, that first uh that first dio album with rainbow <laughs> i think it's called and i think the first one's rainbow rising that probably came out like 70 rainbow rising i'm gonna say rainbow rising came out in 74 so kind of around this time 
Hmm, now I'm going to have to look it up. All right, you guys have a great day. I'm going to put on some rainbow later.